one of the few personalities who exclaim Jesus as the Son of God is John the Baptist. You can hear, you can, if you read through the scripture, you will see that a few personalities say, Wow, you are the Son of God. My dear brothers and sisters, today these three readings call upon us to reflect on Jesus. The Eucharist that happens here is the central theme of or central event that takes place in our life. It is the source and summit of all that we do, the Holy Eucharist. And that's where Jesus comes down when the priest say the consecrated prayer and bless the, the wine and the bread. When we believe that on the blessing, the Lord's Spirit comes down and makes it holy. The first reading is wonderful reading where Prophet Isaiah is introducing Jesus as the Lamb of God. He says that he is the servant who is sent by God on a mission to bring together all the people of Israel. Now not only the people of Israel Jesus is designated to bring, but then the whole humanity. That's why it's very, very wonderful to see how Jesus realizes that in the beginning of his ministry and then later on his ministry. In the beginning, you will see that Jesus says, well, in one instance you see that when the woman comes to Jesus and says, my, my daughter is sick, uh, please come and heal her. And Jesus says, it's not good that to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Am I right? Yes. And so that means what? I'm only sent for these people. It's not good that I share my grace with the other people. But then we see eventually Jesus realizes his mission and he says, I am also sent to the lost sheep. I am also sent to the other people. I must go to preach the word to others also. Beautiful realization. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus' mission is to gather all people together. And to die for humanity. Jesus did not come to stay here for long. How many years did Jesus stay? 33, right? 33. Historical, written. 33 years. But then, first 30 years, he was, uh, you know, nobody knows what life he led. But then, his life was somehow hidden life. But then, this, the scripture says he grew with wisdom and knowledge and obedience. But then the three years, the three years of public life, public ministry were very crucial. He lived only three years of public ministry. Afterwards, he was done away with, you know, three years. But then those three years, the humanity even today remembers Jesus. Just for that three years. We here, we we'll try to live, you know, we, we live. And we wish to live, uh, you know, celebrating silver, golden, and even platinum. God bless us, you know. But then that is it. Jesus had a mission to fulfill only within three years. And that was to live and die for humanity. The lamb was very crucial for the people of Israel. On the eve of Exodus, the first Exodus from Egypt, <clears throat> the Lord asked the people of Israel to sacrifice a lamb and then to shed this, to put that blood of the lamb on their doorpost because when, when the angel of the Lord who executes justice comes, 
he will not attack the people who are in this house, you know, covered with the blood. That sacrifice even continued in, <coughs> in Jerusalem in Israel, where the lamb was sacrificed and the blood was <coughs> sorry. <coughs> The blood was sprinkled upon the people so that the people's sins were forgiven. But that was momentarily. Every time people sin, they had to go and then sacrifice an animal. And most often it was the lamb that was sacrificed. Unblemished lamb, pure lamb. That's why they had to be searching for a pure lamb. And that had to be also examined by the priest, then only allowed to sacrifice because that lamb, the, the blood of the lamb would take away the sins. Jesus is the perfect lamb. He was a sinless lamb. That's why we call it a lamb, call him the lamb of God. Only Jesus could come and sacrifice his life and shed his blood for us because he is pure because we all are human beings sinful. We are born in sin, we live in sin and we die in sin. And that's why I come back to the sacrament of reconciliation. Jesus has established this beautiful sacrament of confession where Jesus washes our sins just like a slate. We write there and then we delete or we, we wipe it clean. That's what Jesus makes us. God makes us a hearts, removing all that is filthy and putting us, filling us with his grace. That's why confession is very important. To make ourselves pure, to make ourselves sacred and like divine. Because then only we can attain God because God is holy. God is pure light. And if we want to be united with God, we need to be like that type of personalities. Free of sin. And Jesus has died for us and then he has given us this chance of going through this confession and wiping away our sins. My dear brothers and sisters, sometimes I ask people, uh, how do you do, you know, uh, you... Uh, how, how, how is uh, the confession, you know? And they say, Father, I, 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 I don't like, I have been confessed maybe one year back. I have confessed myself one year back or two years back because I do not feel to go for confession. Maybe I'm sh ashamed to go. There is nothing ashamed because you are coming to the Lord and Lord is happy to embrace you back. So sacrament of confession or reconciliation is very important for us because God only can forgive sins and through the ministry of the priest God is executing his forgiveness upon us. And that's why a very important thing is to be attaining that salvation which Jesus has won for us by shedding his blood on the cross. Second thing is telling Isaiah is telling that he has come to unite all people together, the people of God. So Jesus is not only meant for the people of Israel, he meant for all humanity. That's why St. Paul claims himself as an appointed apostle to the Gentiles. Who are those Gentiles? We are the Gentiles. We are in that fold of the Gentiles. People who do not belong to the Jewish religion. But Jesus has come. You know, I was working in, in, in central part of India. I come from the south, but then uh, some years I was in the central part of India. Very, very hot there. Uh, goes sometimes even um, 50 degrees Celsius. You know, that is maybe 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. That could be making, even my, I had many times blisters on my hands, you know. Uh, so, not to, not to, you know, invite a sympathy for that. But then, 
we have been working there and one of the thing is to be associated with the common people to be going and visiting these people maybe sometime they are catholics or they they may be hindus and all to be with them because they want also to be you know uh, to be recognized as people of god and many times when when i visited them in the slums their houses were just maybe 4 meters or even 3 meters by 3 meters and just a, a, a few stones and then the plastic on the top when i entered there there is a there is the kitchen there is the bed there there are the the books there everything is there when i was sitting there there was also birds on the top of my head one thing is people like to be visited by a priest or anybody for that matter listen to them you know that's what jesus did jesus went to the poor people the homeless sometimes the in, in, infirm those people who are considered you know bad for the society those who are considered sinners like that of the tax collectors prostitutes jesus went and be he, he had be with them eating with them drinking with them associating with them healing them that's what we are called upon each one of us are missionaries of the lord disciples of the lord how do i did my work as a disciple of jesus the grace that was given to me in baptism how have i shared that grace with other people that's very important for us as the disciples of jesus not only the priests and sisters who are missionaries reach one of us some missionaries how what can i what can i do something good for the other maybe while walking on the road i see a homeless man do i take a courage to go and say hello sir how are you hello brother how are you he will feel he will feel excited just to you call him brother it makes a difference my dear brothers and sisters that's why we are called upon to reflect jesus to mirror jesus in our life so that we also are participating in god's mission work so let us ask the lord grace for ourselves first of all to recognize jesus as the lamb who takes away the sin of the world as saint baptist is preaching to us today and secondly to gather all people like that of jesus associating with them sharing with them being with them spending some time in the in the hospital sometime going and saying hello how are you you know just being with them would be a greatest work that we will have done let us ask the lord grace during this holy eucharist in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen